Hi, this is Swapnil Bharti and we are here at DataWorks Summit in San Jose and today we have with us Premal from Robin Systems. So, so tell us uh, you know, about uh, Robin Systems, what, what do you do? Swapnil, thanks for having us. Uh, at Robin Systems, our vision is to have applications drive the infrastructure. Um, the idea is that today, when you talk about big, complex, uh, distributed data heavy applications, we spend a lot of time getting those applications up and running. And then once they're up and running, you spend a lot of time, uh, you know, sort of caring and managing the clusters, lifecycle management, the test dev environments and things like that. Now, the vision we have is that we've been talking about software defined infrastructure for a while, uh, but you still need to write application specific workflows uh, around each application, each cloud, each data center to run and manage these applications. We want all of that to be completely transparent to the user. Users just focus on the applications and we take care of the infrastructure plumbing so that your applications are available to you all the time. And we do this on the back of containers and Kubernetes and some of the more of the modern technology that enables you to uh, build and ship and run applications anywhere. Great penetration on the stateless side. They have not really been realized some of those benefits on the this big distributed data heavy applications. That's where we come in and we make that magic happen uh, around Kubernetes and Docker. Right. So, uh, where do these applications run? Do you also offer the infrastructure or you just manage it for them? No, we are a software only solution. Mm -hmm. So, we run on any bare metal server okay. or a virtual machine, whether it is uh, on premise data centers with virtualization or on your public cloud, AWS, Azure, Google Cloud. Mm -hmm. And so we take those resources, uh, layer this, uh, the Robin software on top of it, and give you that self-service environment where now you can run any data-heavy application and get a managed service-like experience. So the customers can choose whatever uh, cloud or whatever platform they want. Exactly. Uh, these days we talk about multi-cloud or hybrid cloud, so do you support that as well? So that's Absolutely, and that's actually the beauty of it. So mm -hmm. the way we look at the problem is that if you solve the problem right, infrastructure is invisible. Right. You are not changing your application setup and tooling mm -hmm. on a per infrastructure basis. So now that you have something that is working on premise, if it is running on Robin, it would run the same way if Robin is running, it is running on Robin on AWS. Right. And the beauty of that is that it goes more than that. You can take an application, capture the entire state of the application, the data, the topology, the uh, configs, the images, policies, all of that, and take that entire, almost like think of it as a tarball that you can move around anywhere. And the, the exact same thing can be brought up on AWS. So taking a cluster running on premise, move it to AWS, or from AWS to Azure. And all of that is just a single click migration. Yeah, because if you do, uh, you mentioned at the beginning also, and I think the fact is that most of the companies, they spend like 70% of resources in managing the infrastructure, and they are left with only 20% or 30% to actually innovate on application. Exactly. Uh, and I mean, you should just worry about delivering business value to your customer, not yeah. about, I mean, you don't make money from infrastructure, right? It, exactly, and so I think that we, we call it the data infrastructure friction. It's a drag on the business. Everybody wants to talk about you know, uh, data-driven uh, you know, business and business strategies, but in reality, they talk at the CEO level, CIO level, they talk about the data and business intelligence. Down in the weeds, you're talking about LUNs and server and storage and exactly. VPCs and networking. That is all the stuff that we want to take out of the game. And say so you focus on the applications, we'll take care of the plumbing for you. So, but they're still, uh, they're still developing their application, right? You don't develop the applications for them. We don't develop the applications for them, but what we do do is that each of these applications mm -hmm. has a different way of dealing with infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So a typical polyglot pipeline would have maybe say Elasticsearch, Kafka, Cassandra. Some of them might even have an Oracle or a Postgres database. Each one of these applications has a different way of dealing with infrastructure. Right. Uh, some will have a high availability or resiliency mm -hmm. handle one way, storage, you know, different file systems, block storage. That is the reason why you end up having custom workflows for right. it. So those workflows are the ones that we take out of the equation. So you still manage your Hortonworks or Cloudera or Elasticsearch at the application level. It is their interaction with the infrastructure that we abstract away. Uh, I mean, what you're doing, how different is it from the traditional PaaS or IES world that we are, but they also abstract all these layers, you know, it yeah. depends now. At the same time, uh, are you talking about new applications or are you talking about existing applications? We are talking about any application. Uh, any, it doesn't really be, matter. Yeah, it could be a modern application like TensorFlow. It could be a Java application, uh, exactly. years old. Yeah. <laughs> or it could be, you know, the extreme case, Oracle. Yes. Uh, or an SAP, you've been running in 10, 15 years ago, right? right. And so, uh, applications are designed before the Docker container microservice architectural paradigm 
we can handle those as well. And we have done a bunch of things in the container stack, in the way we have integrated networking with Kubernetes, storage with Kubernetes. That is where we have done a lot of innovation so that we can take care of these older applications that are not really fitting that new modern software architecture philosophy. Uh, also, when we look at the old applications, most mm -hmm. of them are like monoliths. Yeah. But when we look at the new containerized workload, you know, you just chop everything in the smallest one micros. So how do you actually handle that? So we, uh, the, if it is a application which is already been broken down into microservices, great. You are already off to a good start. You still have to worry about how that deals with data. Right. So, for example, a stateless application, a distributed application, one of the worker nodes goes down, Containers are highly available, it comes up somewhere else, the port identity might change, doesn't really matter. You know, you mm -hmm. just join the cluster, off you go. Doesn't quite work like that if you've got, you know, a Hadoop application or a MongoDB a cluster, or a node or a, uh, you know, partition goes down. It can't just come up anywhere and, you know, just join the cluster. And that, those are the kind of problems okay. that we solve, that we make sure the network and storage state is persistent so that you might miss a heartbeat when a node goes down, but it comes up, it is exactly the same node from the cluster, the application perspective. Uh, and what kind of customers do you, what kind of com companies do you serve? A specific industry or anybody? We are ultimately a horizontal application platform. Okay. Uh, in terms of the company profiles, we really work with any large enterprise company. The kind of uh, value that we bring shines the most when you've got complexity and scale mm -hmm. that a lot of these guys are dealing with. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's where we really focus in terms of our go-to market. We have uh, a community edition that uh, a lot of smaller customers use, but uh, our larger customers, mm -hmm. enterprise customers, tend to be the Fortune 500 type of companies. Okay, and, and when you deal with customers, do you have like, you know, uh, a stock uh, one size fit all solution or you like work on, cust you know, uh, case by case basis to customize it, or it's like you know anybody can just go there, you know, with a credit card and just sign up and. Yeah, it, it is almost like that. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you are looking at a community edition, you can just download and go okay. up and running. Uh, if you are uh, trying to on uh, install a platform in a large enterprise setting. Again, as long as uh, you are using any of the existing, there are many applications for which you already have uh, the initial setup and the solution scripts and things like that. You can just go off and uh, you know, start running yourself. But let's say you've got a custom application, mm -hmm. which uh, really there is no vendor, there is no vendor who has containerized right. it. There is no support for it in any of the container platform. We can still take those and easily onboard those. And in those cases, we may need to do some handholding and to work with you. We are still talking about you know a half a day, a couple of day kind okay. of process to onboard a new application. It is not a new elaborate project where okay. you have to go and are in the factory and modify the platform. It is more about uh, just following a certain process to onboard a new application. Right. At the same time, I mean, of course, that uh, that may be self you know, kind of explanatory, but uh, once you've taken a, a monolith, mm -hmm. you know, containerized it, but the thing is that um, the business, you know, they're still working on new features, new capabilities, you know, mm -hmm. so I even if you're reworking on Monolith, you're adding more features, so how does yeah. that work? And you, you can continuously uh, keep upgrading the base image. So one of the interesting things we can do is we, the whole entire process of, let's say, uh, doing the what-if analysis and you want to do uh, you know, some testing before you commit, uh -huh. these are the kind of things we make very easy. So, so let's say you've got a monolithic application running in production and you want to, before committing a change, you want to run something and test it. Mm -hmm. You could, a single click, you can create a entire clone test environment, okay. not just the, uh, uh, the clone of the data, because clone, snapshot, these are verbs that are typically associated with the storage industry. Right. We can do this thing at the app level. So with a single click, you can get a identical test environment uh, test your changes, looks good, committed, otherwise you can destroy it and keep moving. Okay. Even if you are looking at rolling out a vendor provided mm -hmm. uh, update, let's say you are running Hortonworks on Robin and Hortonworks released a new uh, patch, we let you do rolling upgrades, uh, you know, run a bunch of scripts before committing and so mm -hmm. there are all these hooks that you can put in the pl uh, platform mm -hmm. so that all these kind of operations become one click operations. So that's uh, that's sort of the value added stuff. Mm -hmm. the, at the core of it is a integrated architecture which takes any application and allows okay. you to run it in containers and then we have got all these flows built around it mm -hmm. that give you one, one click features. Right. Uh, you, earlier you also mentioned the community version. Mm -hmm. So how many versions are there, number one? Number two is how much of your work is open source? So we uh, we have only a single version. The community edition is really a full featured version. The mm -hmm. only thing is that there's a node limit okay. so that you don't use it for commercial okay. uh, purposes. But other than that, it's a fully featured version. So we really uh, like to maintain only one software uh, you know branch. There is we want to get into all these multiple different mm -hmm. branch management. Uh, in terms of open source, uh, at the core, 
uh, the containers, Kubernetes, uh, so all of that stuff is open source. Uh, networking layer, some of the open vSwitch stuff we use is open source. But then we have layered on it uh, some of the proprietary magic so uh, you know, sauce that we have, which is required to run some of these uh, uh, data heavy application so that is the part where you know, you know we have a enterprise license that we use uh, so it's uh, open source core foundational blocks but then uh, a traditional enterprise software model around it no so when you say open source core it's not your software that you have it's, you, you have taken other components right that's right so we are, we are ultimately not a open source solution where we right, upstream okay. our code. Right, right, we right. use open source foundational blocks, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but ultimately, uh, you know, our mod distribution model right. is uh, a I, free I, community, I, I, uh, which is free forever, and enterprise uh, traditional enterprise subscription life. Since we are talking about you know taking the traditional kind of applications, you know, and then modernizing them in a way. Mm -hmm. What is the oldest industry that you have to dealt <laughs> you have dealt with? Like, uh, when I'm 50 years old, an insurance company or something? something? Not 150, but well, but close. Our biggest customer is USA. Mm -hmm. It was founded in uh, 1922, so 96 years. So that's pretty mm -hmm. close. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, not USA or USA? USA, the yeah. the army insurance yes, company. Yeah, I mean, I'm uh, USA okay. member. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Mm -hmm. So so they are running some of their uh, production analytics uh, pipelines. Uh, on Robin, and so while they are not, um, you know, your high-tech, uh, you know, born in cloud, uh, three-year-old Valley startup, they are very, uh, you know, advanced and forward-looking in terms of digital infrastructure investment, uh, and they were one of the first customers who started working with us, and they helped us define some of our roadmap. Uh, as we're looking to uh, get all the kinks ironed out at the production enterprise level. And uh, today they've been using us in production for some time now. So, so when you deal with these customers, you know, old customers, what is the biggest challenge you face? The biggest challenge we face or we see the customers no, you, you, face? You face because, in, in, because, you know, you are bringing them from their age to your age. Yeah. Uh, I think, you know, we find that a lot of these, the customers that we talk to, they are looking to modernize the infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Some of them are looking to get, modernize it and get sort of the cloud benefits, self-service benefits in-house. Uh, some of them are looking to go to cloud. And so that's the uh, ideal customer profile. Mm -hmm. Now, when we start talking to them, a lot of these guys are struggling to figure out right. where to start. Exactly. And so uh, typically our challenge is to get because we can do any application, we offer all these features, uh, you know, we run the risk of uh, uh, boiling the ocean. So our key for us is to find a very well-defined project where we can show immediate value, land and then expand the classic model. Mm -hmm. uh, and whenever we have done that, we have been very successful. So, so that's what we rely on, that once we get in, I think, you know, the word of mouth spreads, people want to get the self service productivity and that starts spreading. And that's how we really, once we are inside, we spread like wildfire in, uh, within the company. So what is, how do you approach, uh, do you pick the easiest application first, which can be deployed so they get confident, or you pick the, the biggest and most challenging one? How, what we have done approach? both, really. We go by whatever is the opportunity mm -hmm. that presents itself. We have taken Okay, on. Let's, let's flip the table. Mm -hmm. From the customer's perspective, mm -hmm. how should they approach you know, their traditional applications you know, so that internally they have you know, with it confidence? So we typically start with a application or test dev cluster. Okay. So uh, ideally, we say give, uh, take us uh, the application that is that they are you know most comfortable with playing around with, mm -hmm. and we look at a test dev cluster. Production keeps running on whatever uh, environment they have, and we show Robin running on a test dev cluster and see how easy it is for you to spin up new test dev environments and do some of the things that I talked about. Mm -hmm. And from there, we expand two ways. We go from test dev into larger uh, deployment production environment, and then we pick up more and more applications. Right. So uh, USA, for example, we start with Elasticsearch. Mm -hmm. And then we spread because pipeline is never just Elasticsearch or one application. Right. You've got some Kafka, Elasticsearch, some database, uh, you know, some visualization tools. So over time, then you pick up more and more of the applications and you go into production deployment. So that is the land and expand. Uh, that we are really talking. I about. like the, the 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 metaphors or you know terms that you know the industry uses. Yeah, lift and shift, and you know, yeah, <laughs> all this. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, till now, we mostly talked about existing and older applications. Why should a new company, which is uh, you know from the day one, they are containerizing their application, should they care? Are they your customers too? If yes, uh, why? Yeah, absolutely. And so we we have got startups who are using us as well, mm -hmm. and uh, the. The basic issue, let's say you are born in cloud company, you don't have legacy data centers mm -hmm. and a lot of the resource management issues that they have. But you still have to figure out a way to deploy your applications on cloud 
in a very simple, easy to use manner. So that's where you might get you know, managed services here and there, but if you look at a typical pipeline, you don't want to go and exchange your old school bare metal silos with different managed service silos. So that's where we come in and say, we give you a platform that allows you to take any application and turn into that simple, easy to use managed service like experience. Why they should not go with Red Hat on all those companies? So, and that's where, if you look at what we do, Red Hat, OpenShift, these are all tools that are great for status application. When you get to the application we are talking about, there is nobody really who does what we do. So if you look at uh, you know the um, you know, application support metrics for these companies, uh, they don't really uh, get into deep into data heavy applications and mm -hmm. that's where really we shine. So if you are really looking at big data, machine learning applications, all modern stuff, we're not talking about the oracles and SAP anymore. Mm -hmm. There are not too many choices that do everything that we do. Most companies either don't do all the applications we do or if they do, they stick to just the initial deployment and not some of the test of environment management and uh, migration and moving things between availability zones or data centers. These are the kind of things that nobody else can do. The stuff that we club under life cycle management. Mm -hmm. So that's it. It's both a application support differentiation and the feature functionality differentiation where nobody else can match us. Uh, so when, I, when you're not you know, helping these old companies become young again, what do you do in your free time? I personally, I'm a big uh, sports buff, so I spend a lot of time uh, uh, you know, watching sports vicariously, uh, playing that, and then uh, I'm also a bit of a foodie. So I, the rest of my time, either I spend looking for new restaurants, new things to uh, you know chase, or, and the rest of the time working out what I, the calories I put on. So that kind of keeps me busy. So, so you don't cook? I don't cook, I'm a consumer, I'm not a producer. <laughs> nice, nice. Uh, so thank you uh, so much for talking today. Um, hopefully we'll see you again at the next conference and uh, it was nice. So thanks you know, for talking to me today and hopefully we'll see you again at the next conference. Thanks, so Thank you.